the Munich chapter. This is my second uh, tickle, Euro tickle meeting. So this year's model of the t-shirt is Proc Unknown because my talk last year made use of that and this one will make use of it and the lightning round talk tomorrow will make use of it. I'm trying to get a feel for how many people are falling asleep after lunch. So you can, uh, I don't know, concentrate on why this cursor is blinking. And Richard, uh, you gave a nice talk uh, I, and asked for suggestions. I think you'll ha I'll give you a suggestion based on this talk uh, at the end. Okay, so what I did last year is, well, actually, uh, Richard gave a talk in 2016 making use of a tool called Slidey which um, makes presentations out of HTML files. So last year I wrote it by hand and actually made my own C slidey because the company I work for names everything with SI first. Um, and since slidey didn't have all the features I needed, like being able to reskin on the fly, I had to write my own version. So what I decided, what I did after that is after giving the talk, I had to hand over the slides to Paul so he could distribute them. And that involved going through and collecting all the style sheets I'd used and all the JavaScript and C slidey and the images and putting them in a file to give to him. So I decided to automate that task. And that's what this compiler does. It compiles the presentations. So it interprets an SPM format, which is actually just a tickle script, because that's the kind of thing I always do. And it outputs a slideshow as HTML combined with cascading style sheets combined with JavaScript. So in a way, it's creating something like a star pack. Everything is now in one file, and it's easy for me to give to Paul and for him to distribute. He can even email it and I'm sure that the whole presentation gets where it's going. So we'll look at the, the little language that it is, its syntax, its uh, macros, declarations, the command line, so that I can create several different versions of a talk. And uh, in the conclusion, we'll talk about some statistics and takeaways. So it's actually quite ticklish. You can't really read this, but it should look pretty ticklish to you. Uh, mind the gap, after this, all the slides are described. And they're described basically like tickle ensemble commands. And at the top, I have a few declarations saying what kind of slides I want that sort of thing. And of course, if you do download the presentation, you'll get this as well. All right. So the first syntax. You're going to learn, eight, this is the way HTML writes an anchor tag with nothing in it. And this is the way SPM does. An interesting coincidence is there are no HTML elements that look like any of the commands in the tickle core. So what I'm going to do is let proc unknown turn everything that could be an HTML tag into an HTML element. So if we have an anchor with content, it becomes this. And now, in order to get the, the beautiful graphics, you have to start adding information. One thing is if you're going to link to a particular element in HTML, you've got to give it an ID. This is my way of giving it an ID. And you see that a hash mark string doesn't look like any tickle command, it ends up in proc unknown. Proc unknown pulls this apart and generates the HTML. You can also do things like set the class easily. 
This turns out to be important for cascading style sheets. Any Perl programmers here? Okay, well, there's more than one way to do it. Cascading style sheets match either the class or they match the structure of the document model. And it turns out that the people really worried about optimization and performance would prefer that you specify your style rules based on the class. It's not necessary, but it's a possibility that's supported here. <clears throat> you can also add arbitrary uh, attributes to your HTML elements. I just join it with a dot here. Again, proc unknown takes care of all that. Can add attributes with content. So here this relation is next, and this is the way you have to write it in HTML. And then you can start adding style. And this is really a shortcut because, okay, I want to make the foreground white. And this is the way I have to write it in HTML. And you might have noticed that Tickle is very terse and HTML gets kind of long. So we can add more than one style. It just adds on. We can add tags with an href. Okay, I needed a dot inside here and I didn't feel like escaping it, so I supported dot dot. I guess on that day I was inspired by Fortran 4 and the way they handle quote marks. You can have a tag with quite a few elements. The actual order doesn't matter. The fact that there's an equal sign here or a hash mark here, that's the trick for splitting apart these things and turning them into HTML. So create some macros. The original look that we had um, was specified by my employer pretty much. They have some eye catchers, they have some plaques. We'll see that. and. Uh, you have dividers in the slide deck. But these are the only things I added. And the, the most important thing I added, I think, was this void command, which basically just ignores the arguments it's given so that I can have a sort of a lava flow presentation. I can pick out the slides I want without having to delete them. I can just mark them as void and skip them, but add them in later. So presentation slide. Now it looks like this, and of course, this is the command that's intercepted by proc unknown and then given to a procedure that makes star tags. And it knows that here's the content. Again, this slide has a level two header within it and a paragraph within it. I can create dividers just as easily. I can create the title slides simply. This is the first slide you saw. This is a divider slide. And there are various arguments for controlling this. I can add JavaScript directly, for example, within a presentation. All the presentations don't have to be the same. I can, if I have a special need, I can add a, the code immediately within it for some reason. If you want to see the console, if you want to leave messages in the console, you can add that into your script. I guess you can do all sorts of bad things. Okay, I can also add special cascading style sheet rules. If I decide, okay, the anchors in this particular presentation should have a silver background. I don't have to go back and change the original style sheets. I can just override what was in the style sheets with inline declarations within the SPM file. And there are various visibility options um, that make more sense for complicated presentations. I can have comments that I show or not. I can have hidden slides that I show or not. For example, this. These are the visible slides. And if I go back and enable the hidden ones, I see here that I'm enabling hidden ones. You can see that there are other slides in here that I'm sparing you. You don't have to look at those. 
But if you get the download of the HTML file, they're in there if you want to look at them, if you want to go deeper into the detail. So. And then on the command line, I can pick the type of file I want to create. So the, the, the normal case is I just want everything in one file, sort of like a star pack. But I can say, OK, I, the images are kind of big. If you want to look at it without images, you want to send a file without images, you can leave those out of the star pack. And if they happen to be online and can see your server, you can still follow the URLs to them. So it's not apparent if you have access, but if the server's down, or if it's behind a firewall that you're not allowed to look at, um, then you just get the alternate text. So the file that I can, that is copied into the, the, the information that is copied into the file are things like CSS, JavaScript, and standard image formats. So you can inline all the images, various options. Use as you need them. OK, so what's the overhead? Well, the style sheets I'm using have about 1,000 lines. The JavaScript for C-Slidey is about 1,000 lines. And all in all, it's 80K that's going to be added on top, and this is dwarfed by any image you happen to be including. If you have images in your thing, you're not going to notice the size of this. And these are the sorts of sizes that come out. This presentation is the uh, SPM one. So I have about 360 kilobytes in this file. This, the SPM file itself has like 22 kilobytes. And just the HTML has 40. So I would say, Richard, in, in WAP, you know, I saw you wrote HTML by hand. It's going to be easier to write it as Tickle. Smaller. And because it's working with um, this proc unknown approach, if they start adding more elements, it's automatically in there. You don't have to go back and change it. So some takeaways. It's a nice way to make these standalone presentations in HTML technology with cascading style sheets and JavaScript. HTML is easy and a little tedious, but it needs the CSS to have beautiful pages. And CSS, I found, is pretty awesome. It has a lot of features. It has a really good job of matching exactly the elements you want to highlight in a particular way you want and distinguishing them from other ones. And, uh, well, JavaScript has DOM skills. It's really unfortunate we didn't get there first because I don't see why I couldn't have the animation done with, with Tickle. The only thing I see that JavaScript offered, the reason it became a killer app was that it understood the DOM. Okay, and once again, Tickle masquerades well as a little language, proc unknown. It's my hammer, it's my tool for everything now. So thank you, and are there questions? The microphone's on the way. Do need to just make the also the images they are inline. This means they are they are get they get ba uh, base sixty four encoded and then dumped into the file. Yes, Tickle does that. Okay, right. and the second question would be, um, how is the page? Uh, the page break, or the, the new page, how does this work? You, just to separate one page from the other. These are 
Yeah. Um, um, just okay. wondering how this works. Let's so, jump back. So each slide is a page. And the JavaScript hides the ones you don't see. So actually, when I'm jumping to another page, I'm using cascading style sheet attributes to say, hide the one I'm leaving and show the one I'm jumping to. And one of the things we can do with uh, the command line option is can, with a simple keystroke, show the whole thing. So these are actually the, if you had to print it out, for example, you wouldn't want to see it a page at a time. You'd want it as sort of this, this is the fan fold look. So all the slides in the thing now are as if they were one big page, which is actually what they are in the HTML file. It's only the cascading style sheet that's hiding the parts we're not focused on. <coughs> Any other questions? When you, when you, just when you create a presentation, it's maybe you find out the page break or that the information at one page uh, is more than what you get on one page, then you have to do it all manually, <coughs> isn't it right? So you have to just take care by your own. This means that you have to recreate the HTML view all the time, so to speak. Yeah, there, there's no intelligence in here trying to reformat it okay. for you. Yeah. But there is, uh, when I show it page by page, I, I zoomed in so that it, you didn't see outside the border. This is the visible area in the presentation mode. And when I'm typing and I see that it goes below the line, then I just have to go back and reformat, and I can shrink the font or do any of the style tricks necessary. Okay, I'm not sure which, maybe I, I try with the microphone. Uh, I wanted to ask this uh, kind of declaring HTML and um, HTML attributes and elements, it reminds me a bit of TDOM. So, was your approach inspired by TDOM or? Did it evolve separately? Um, <coughs> I don't think I understand the question. <laughs> I, I, I don't do anything uh, sophisticated myself. I just turn what looks like HTML into HTML. And okay, you have to know a bit of HTML to do that. That, for example, that a, a table row is within a table. You have to start the table, and then you have to start the table row. And it turns out that's one of the easiest ways to save space, because all this nesting is long and tedious in HTML directly, but very easy when it's just a tickle body. Exactly. Exactly. And I know this, um, there's this TDOM um, library, and this also allows you to create HTML elements with tickle in the tickle syntax. So, uh, my question was if this is somehow inspired by that. Um, okay, thank I, you. I steal ideas from everywhere, but I don't remember <laughs> taking it from TDOM. More questions? Doesn't seem so. Thanks, thank Michael. You. And I forgot to look up who's up next. <laughs>